Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bob Hen. I'm a staff in CRRC Zhuzhou Locomotive Company, and I'm now doing PhD research in University of Huddersfield in UK. My topic is about the influence of wheelchair flexibility on the development of railway wheel polygonization. The phenomenon of this problem has been found uh, in almost all, all kinds of railway vehicles throughout the world for decades. As it's very harmful, researchers are trying, uh, are continuing efforts to investigate the mechanism behind some potential influence factors that have been discovered, such as vehicle speed, wheel state flexibility, speed resonance, track modes, and so on. Among all of them, one of the popular, uh, one popular view is that the wheel state flexibility is the leading influencing factor. So the, the aim of this research is to carry out a fundamental research to check whether the real state flexibility can influence the wheel polygonization in a general sense. If it's true, which real state modes will dominate the wheel polygonization? So first, the, uh, uh, the flexibility of the real state is investigated by importing its upcurse model to the model. And the model is intentionally said to be very simple to uh, minimize the uh, um, unexpected uh, influence factors. So this table uh, lists all the uh, structural modes, uh, including um, the uh, flexible modes of the wheel set, which is illustrated in red, and other rigid modes um, in blue. Just, just bear in mind, there are two important frequencies. One is the first one, 27.8, which is a, a vertical mode, and the Fifth one, uh, 50 hertz, which is a uh, torsional mode of the wheel set. I, 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 will, I will mention these two frequencies later. Uh, a developed program is uh, adopted to uh, simulate the evolution of the wheel polygonization. Basically, it's a loop program, uh, which is totally controlled in my life uh, in an automatic and a parametric way. And the R-chart wheel model combined with a fast seam, which is also known as KTH model or KTH wheel model, uh, is used to calculate the conferential radius deviation. And the investigation plans to compare the red parts between rigid and flexible wheel sets with two steps. The first step is to apply the white noise to the MBS model to get the response of uh, some contact parameters uh, in both time and frequency domain, and then archer wheel model, uh, archer wheel depth, and wheel number. The second step is to uh, use the prediction uh, predict program to uh, simulate the, the development of wheel polygonization in, uh, between rigid and flexible wheel sets under several scenarios. So here's the influence of the wheel set flexibility on contact parameters. Um, the red curve is the uh, flexible wheel set. The black curve is the rigid wheel set. So let's just focus on the discrepancy between these two uh, curves. So for normal flow, uh, here is the uh, case of a straight track, and the lateral creepage is really small. So um, for normal flow, the longitudinal creepage, uh, two curves present similar, but uh, uh, for lateral creepage, the, uh, it's um, largely increased due to the flexibility. And strangely, uh, the increase in light creepage can be reflected in wheel number, but not in the archer wheel depth. Why? A sensitivity analysis of the light creepage is carried out with uh, the typical uh, parameters from this case. Uh, just note that the light creepage is very small. As you can see, uh, even the light creepage is amplified by 100 times. The magnification of the archer wheel depth only increased less than 1.02, so it's concluded that archer wheel depth is not sensitive to the natural creepage at all when the natural creepage is at a very low, low level. And I think this can explain why the, the increase in the natural creepage cannot be reflected in the archer wheel depth. So to compare the case of a small natural creepage, I used a curved track of, of a very small radius, 100 meter, to uh, to get a uh, high uh, creepage. So, so in this case, as you can see, um, oh, so first for normal force, it's still similar, okay? But the longitudinal and light creepage has been uh, increased, uh, largely uh, uh, accelerated uh, due to the uh, uh, with the flexibility. Uh, just uh, uh, look at uh, these two frequency, um, 
27.8, which is a rigid mode, and uh, at the 50 hertz, which is a torsional mode, is excited to influence the, the creepage. And in this case, uh, the in increase in the creepage is successfully uh, uh, reflected in both wheel number and actual wheel depth, because uh, in this case, the light creepage is in the high level. So here's a very simple uh, example to illustrate the basic feature of uh, the prediction program. Uh, the basic feature is that uh, under a uh, uh, um, so frequency excitation, uh, the uh, corresponding water will be developed. For example, with a vertical real irregularity of wavelength of one tenth wheel parameter, the tenth water will be exactly developed. And uh, this basic feature can be extended to the situation of multiple frequency compo components. And uh, then, uh, there are several scenarios to uh, simulate the evolution of wheel polygonization. There's one straight track and four curved tracks with different 3 d uh, All the parameters are intentionally to set to be the same to facilitate the uh, comparison, only except that for the uh, curve of the smallest uh, radius, the running distance is, has to be set uh, smaller to avoid the contact detachment due to large wheel. So here is the um, influence of the wheel state flexibility on the development of wheel polygonization. There are five scenarios, straight one and four curved one. And the, the black curve is still the um, rigid wheel set. The red one is the uh, flexible wheel set. So let's still focus on the difference between these two curves. And I illustrated these, uh, these curves in two aspects. One is the growth rate, and two is the developed orders. So the for, uh, uh, respect to the growth rate, firstly, the smaller the curve radius is, the faster the development of wheel, uh, wheel polygonization will be. Let's, uh, let's focus on the Y coordination compared to each other. Um, so the reason is that the creepage increase with the decrease of curve radius because uh, large, uh, uh, and large creepage lead to large wheel. So that's the reason. And secondly, for straight track, the wheel state flexibility does not accelerate the growth of uh, growth rate. On the contrary, it slows down the growth rate because the creepage are very small in the case of straight line and normal force is the sole dominant factor and it's likely that the wheel state flexibility attenuates the normal force. So that's the reason. And thirdly, for curved track, the wheel state flexibility has a numerous effect on accelerating the growth rate. Uh, the corresponding frequency is just within the range of the flexible uh, free mode frequency. And here's the influence of the wheel state flexibility on the development of wheel polygonization. Um, and the uh, in, in terms of the developed orders. So the first uh, order will always develop because of the uh, real state imbalance introduced from the FE modeling. Uh, it, it's also realistic in reality, right? Because in reality, there is always an initial uh, imbalance. And the sixth order uh, is uh, due to uh, the sixth order uh, occur occurring in all the scenarios is due to the vertical rigid body mode of the wheel set sleeper with respect to the ground. Um, so here's the relationship, this frequency, and this is the corresponding order. That's the reason. And uh, here is uh, uh, the nice order is confusing, because on the one hand, there must be a driver behind, right? But on the other hand, the, the, this order will we, we not change correspondingly with the speed, which means it can be explained by the frequency fixed mechanism, and uh, the reason for this order uh, is not clear. F uh, finally, um, uh, uh, the first uh, uh, three uh, wheel set uh, flexible modes are suspected to, to are supposed to have uh, influence. Uh, on the uh, development of wheel polygonization. However, uh, no arborist peaks are, uh, are, were found as a predictions of the orders corresponding to, corresponding to uh, the, the first three uh, flexible mode frequencies. Uh, so does it mean that uh, all the um, 
flexible uh, modes of the real state cannot be excited? Not exactly. Let's just keep in, bear in mind, in, a, in, a, in the case of extreme small curved radius, um, the, the longitude curvature and the night curvature is effectively excited due to uh, the torsional mode. So a further simulation is carried out, and uh, the, the, here's the result. As we can see, the fourth, the 14, uh, 14 order is effectively excited, which is due to the torsional mode. Uh, here is the uh, uh, relationship. So it's assumed that in the case of uh, extreme small curve radius, the real state torsional mode is, is excited effectively influencing the creepage and therefore result in the development of the 14th order. So here's the discussion. Among all the structural modes of the vehicle track system, why is that some need to the wheel polarization while others do not? A hypothesis is that if a structural mode can significantly influence the circumferential wheel well, in a periodic way, the structural mode is very likely to contribute to the wheel polarization. There are some conclusions. First, the wheel state of flexibility can always increase the light creepage, but may attenuate the normal force. The increase of light creepage can accelerate the wheel polarization only if the light creepage is at a high level. Secondly, the first three wheel state of flexible modes were not found to make a dominant contribution to the development of wheel polarization in a general sense. Thirdly, an extreme small radius curved trike for example, 100 meter, the torsional mode of the wheel set was found to be effectively excited to dominate the wheel polarization. And this uh, result is, is, is very interesting. Maybe it's similar to, uh, to your result from the, uh, according to your, the title of your presentation, and I think that would be very interesting. Um, so here, thanks. thanks for your attention. Thanks. <laughs>